Hey, so on this episode of Tea with Tash, I wanted to talk about having a minimalist hospital bag. When you're prepping to go to the hospital, if that's where you've chosen to give birth, um, then it can be really stressful. It can be a really big piece where you don't know when to prepare it. You might not know, you know, what you need based on what your labor is going to look like. And it can be really difficult to decide what to bring um, and my job as a doula uh, in terms of the prenatal appointments that we go through so we'll always have around two prenatal appointments on average the first where we really talk about details about the birth plan we get to know each other we go through all of the special circumstances that they might want during their labor and we go we confirm that and go through that in prenatal two as well but we talk a little bit more about when to call me, when to track contractions, what to pack in your hospital bag, and all of that good stuff. So I don't know about you, but I'm a planner, I'm a packer, and I really enjoyed this part. But I also wasn't really sure what to put in my bag. Um, And a big part about what I do when I work with parents is to work on cleansing our environments and detoxing some of the stuff so that we can really have just less around us, feel more calm, and live less anxious lives. So um, this is something that I work on with parents all the time in um, in terms of what to bring to the hospital. So I thought I would give you my, I think I've got, I'm just looking here, my top five um, favorites and then I'll add on a couple for the ones that feel like they just need a little bit more so before I go into the top five I just wanted to talk about um, picturing the worst case scenario a little bit so sometimes you know when we're prepping for the hospital we have this birth plan in mind we have this goal in mind of how we want it to be and it might be completely different it might not you know, something might happen that requires us to stay a little bit longer, or it might be the opposite. We might be out of there, you know, that same day. And we really can't necessarily predict that, um, you know, unless you've got a medical reason to go through a C-section or something like that, um, that you can prepare for a little bit more. But it can be quite tricky. Um, And I remember when I had packed mine as well, looking at everything I had, it just felt heavy. It felt like a little bit too much. And it's almost like when you pack to go on a trip, you probably pack too much and you realize when the trip is over, you've used a third of the stuff. You stayed in the same pajamas, you had the same kind of clothes on. And of course it's different scenario when you're going through labor, but I wanted to make you think of, I guess, the worst case scenario and that if you really needed something, um, you know, whether that be a phone charger or something that you feel like is a must-have there might be someone around you in the hospital or someone that might be able to go and get you that one thing that seems so imperative to have in the moment so excuse me here are my top five so number one is health card and insurance documents if you feel like you need them Um, It's not in order of priority in terms of like this is more important than anything else, Um, but sometimes depending on who you work with, whether it's an OB or midwives, you do have papers that you need to bring as well. So that would be my... Um, one of my first things because sometimes there's information in there that they need you know to follow your birth plan to follow your health history and all of that good stuff and register you properly Um, so it's good to have that as well as your partners um, you know for just any reason in particular and pack that and it's really small I mean you could have that um, in a little backpack Okay, so my second thing is a change of clothes. So one for baby, one for yourself, and one for partner. Again, we don't know how long we're going to be there for, um, but one thing for baby, if it's a surprise, of course, you can bring something neutral instead of bringing, you know, one for both sexes, not that it needs to be any different, um, and, you know, just make sure that you've got that packed, and something for you as well. So the trick, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. The trick is to also feel like you're dressed properly before you go to the hospital. So often it can be the case where we don't know how our labor labor is gonna start, of course. We might be somewhere where we're not dressed where we wanna be and we show up at the hospital and it's not what we wanted to wear. But I'm just painting the scenario for, you know, if you're at home and things are starting to happen, you've got a bit of time, you know, to have a shower or get dressed, my recommendation in terms of what to wear to bring to the hospital would be a comfy pair of leggings or like mat- like soft, loose maternity pants. Um, and then also um, something that you can wear 
um, as a bra that's kind of like a bralette that ties right at the back here and then that might be a maternity bra as well um, not always just for breastfeeding but because if you need to be able to like clip the back and clip here and take that off you can do that very fast anything that ties up at the back or that you need to take off your arms is not the best in a quick kind of scenario so a nice maternity bralette would be great that clips right in the middle of the back a comfy kind of like loose top and some leggings so walking into the hospital you've got an, a pair of pants if you need it um, but you can bring an extra in terms of my number two thing to bring a change of clothes for baby yourself and partner so number three would be a small bag of toiletries so i'm all about feeling cool common you know collected um when you're in labor and feeling your best i don't care if someone feels like they need to put makeup on i don't care if they don't or if they want to you know not have deodorant or have deodorant what i'm saying is you do you so feel like you're just bring what you Feel like you need to feel like yourself and to feel comfortable because i totally believe that when you do that and when you feel energetically like you are more like yourself you're going to feel more comfortable and less stressed in labor which is truly important um, in the grand scheme of things when you're going through popping out a human so my next thing number four would be a cooler and some snacks this should be my number one because i'm all about fuel all the time i'm all about food if i'm going somewhere i'm like pack the snacks um, i think it's really important because i feel like you can't always do something um i've got hair in my face um you can't really always do something um with full energy and full um intent if you're hangry and I don't know about you, but I don't feel like I can truly be myself when I'm hungry. So I think that's really important. Packing yourself some dry snacks or whatever it might be, something in the freezer or the fridge that you can just grab, put in the cooler and go, that's so important. And you're gonna need that if you want to choose to eat and drink intermittently throughout your labor or after, or to fuel your partner or your doula or whatever because they don't feel like you have to bring food for your doula it's actually the opposite i usually bring extra snacks for my clients um but i'm just talking about you know the other support people that you might have there if you have a partner to fuel them because they're going to be helping you with this amazing you know crazy moment of your life so that's my number four and my number five is a robe you know i googled when i was pregnant with rocky like what to wear when you're in labor i asked the midwives because all of a sudden i was like what do i wear <laughs> you know when i'm in labor and it was just this confusing thing like do i need to like have nothing you know down there do i need to be it was just like all of a sudden i had no idea what to do um so in terms of my favorite thing to suggest to wear and to bring is a robe so picture like a long kimono style like past your knees because you want to be able to like you know sit if you need to or be in different positions and stay warm if you feel like you need to stay warm but open it up if you need to and it's also something that you can put on your arms if you end up having or choosing an epidural um, so your back is open and anything like cotton or um, similar to that is much more comfortable than the hospital robes i also feel like they tend to get quite high if you've got the robes that have the buttons on the sides you can definitely unclip and loosen them but some don't so i feel like sometimes depending on what positions you are it can get quite tight here and then i've had some clients kind of be like just rip it off rip it off um so that's not comfortable so if it's something that's already open in the neck um, then you can cover yourself if you need to or you can have it just wide open and again worst case scenario if you didn't have undies in a bra like that's cool to labor in <laughs> full-on naked um, so that's my fifth tip so if you feel like you need to add on to any of those five things this section is for you so my next suggestion is depends um, and the reason why I suggest this is because for me just from my experience and from what i've seen with clients it's sometimes difficult to find extra depends in the hospital also they have mostly one size so it's often hard to find something that's comfortable um, i'm all about getting depends because i feel like you don't have to bring 100 pairs of underwear you can just bring a pack of depends also it's nice and soft and another like little side trick you can bring pads as well if you want but those blue pads like the pee pads that are in the hospital you can fold them over like 
by three so like one side over one side over and you can stick some of the pads from the hospital in there and it makes like a nice long heavy pad you can even wet that and put it in the freezer at the hospital or put it inside your depend it is like marvelous for um hydrotherapy or cooling um, in that moment when you need it right after birth as well um, if you've had a vaginal birth and otherwise regardless it's just nice to be able to have some big old undies um, you know for the recovery period as well so that would be my tip for that and again worst case if you don't have it the hospital has some you can dig around for a couple extras um, and then use those and my eighth one would be diapers and wipes for baby so Yes, the hospital usually gives you some. Um, there's usually like a pack of four to five diapers and wipes in there. And again, this is so different depending on how long you're going to be at the hospital. You might need like, you know, sometimes unfortunately there's a, a lot of scenarios where babies are in the NICU and you might need diapers for you know a week or even more um, and it's impossible to plan for that you're not going to be bringing you know a suitcase full of diapers and wipes just to make sure um, but that would be something that you could bring you know just a couple and some wipes if you feel like you've run out of the hospital you might run out of the hospital ones and again i have never seen someone say no if you say that you forgot your diapers and wipes um, you know to get you a couple extras Often there might, you know, be some in the bed next to you over there and you can just grab them. So my ninth thing would be Apno. So this is an amazing cream, all purpose nipple ointment. So I often hear of suggestions of bringing linolin, I think it's called that purple tube for breastfeeding. If you're planning on breastfeeding or if you're not, um, it's still very helpful. So you can ask for a prescription for this beforehand. Um, some practitioners might say no, uh, but I think that it would be very nice and supportive if they said yes. Um, and it's just an amazing cream that the baby can still drink when you have it on your nipples. It can really help. It's a herbal remedy. They have to create it beforehand. So when you're in that hospital and if you're trying to breastfeed and all of a sudden you're getting some cracks or some soreness in those early hours, it might take a day or so for, the, for your pharmacy to be able to get that cream to you. So if you can get your hands on that early, it's really nice to have. It's a prescription. Um, it looks like kind of like a creamy um, clear when you rub it in your fingers and it's like white gold. It's amazing. And my last thing would be anything that you feel like you need for entertainment. So if it's part of your birth plan for it to be, you know, music or whether it's like your iPad or a book or anything like that for yourself or your partner if you've got one to keep the time passing. I was massive on my music list. Um, I had like Eminem pump in as Rocky just shot out of me. So, you know, whatever that is for you that you feel like you need to create your environment for, that's a really awesome thing to bring. So that's my minimalistic hospital bag list. Um, and again, focusing on the top five, if you really feel like you've got more time and more energy to get the rest, then do so. But really, um, you know, you don't need much to be able to, you know, feel prepared. Um, there's things like there's always little baskets of hats at the hospital. You know, if you feel like you want to put a hat on your baby um, and there's always some little extra things in there that you could have someone sneak for you especially if you've got a doula they get you the good stuff um, so i hope that really helps um, depending on if there's one that you have not had in your hospital bag i'd love to hear so just like this video and comment the number below or whatever that was and if you feel like you would add something in and take one of mine out please share that with me i love hearing what people put in their hospital bags um, so just comment that below and if you'd like to hear more videos like this just please subscribe and um, also I have a freebie for you. It's a free cheat sheet on establishing self-care. And I think that's really important when we're stressing out to pack our hospital bags. Sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. So if you want to get some extra help in terms of establishing self-care, go to tasharobitai.com slash self-care. You can get your hands on that cheat sheet. So thank you so much, everybody. And I will see you next week. Bye for now.